Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Sense Galaxy. I am Manjunath. In this YouTube channel, as a practitioner, I cover theory, concepts, good amount of industrial applications, tutorials, frameworks, processes, and the tips and tricks for acing the data science interviews. If you are someone who is into this, consider subscribing to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to make use of Python environment and show you how you can efficiently do exploratory data analysis with very minimal effort. If it is exciting enough, please continue watching this video till the end for hands-on learning. Let's deep dive into the coding side. So let's get started, friends. As you can see, the interface, I'm, I'm using Anaconda distribution. Just for information, I'm going to show you what is the version that I'm using. It's Anaconda Navigator 2.1.2, the latest and the greatest version of the distribution. I recommend you to use the Anaconda distribution. There are multiple distributions. By far, I use this for my data science endeavors, including deep learning, okay? So this distribution, as you can see, comes with the several suite of uh, applications or the products if you can think of, okay? I'm going to make use of a Jupyter Notebook, quite familiar to most of you who are in data science, particularly in Python environment. Once I click on this launch, I shall go to this interface. So this is the Jupyter Notebook interface. It's a web interface. It's an interactive web interface, allows you to key in the Python code. And in fact, it, it constitutes an integrated development environment, meaning you could key in the code, interact with the interface, compile the code, debug the code, see the output, including the numerical as well as the graphical output and all of that. Of course, you could, you could export, save it as HTML, save it as Python notebook, etc. All of this, I think you're familiar. I want to draw your attention to a particular menu item on this interface called NB extensions. By default, when you launch here from the Anaconda Navigator Jupyter Notebook, you will not see by default this NB extensions added as a menu item. You have to enable programmatically by running it at the command prompt. And a counter prompt if you will. So what is the use of this? Probably I can make a separate video. Please let me know in the comments. The use is simply it increases the productivity. In fact, many of this integrated development suite of products of the integrated development environment has got built-in intelligence, meaning if we instantiate a class and put the object dot, it shall give you what are the methods, the attributes of the parameters, etc., and it will speed up your productivity. And one such what we are going to do is increasing the productivity by using an interesting package in Python. So from here, I'm going to click on this new and go to Python, new Python notebook. By default, it is untitled. I can double click and name it. I'll just say pandas profiling. So probably some of you would have guessed I'm, I'm talking about pandas profiling for increasing the productivity. There are multiple packages like SweetWiz, like detail, there are many, okay? If, let me know if you want to see more such things. So this is the first cell that you can encounter in the new Jupyter Notebook interface. So what do you do typically for exploratory data analysis? Obviously, you're going to understand the problem as a function of the domain. And more importantly, you would look for the data associated with the problem. And to explore that data set, you would need certain packages that the Python environment provides seamlessly for you to be able to explore the data in a given context. So I'm going to import certain packages. I'm going to import, let's say, pandas, numpy. Let's start with the numpy as an entry. If you need for something, you can use it. Then these are the popular packages. Numpy stands for numerical Python, for numerical analysis, particularly for numerical computations. Then another popular package is called pandas, predominantly used for, let's say, the data frame manipulation, okay? And for visualization, you would usually import matplotlib. For now, I'm going to import a Seaborn package. That's pretty much to start with, okay? Three packages. NumPy, I may not use so much. Let me be very clear about it. I'm going to make use of pandas because I want to import and save it, save the file into a predefined directory and things of that nature. Seaborn certainly, for a particular reason, I'm going to talk about it. So notice here, import numpy as np. Numpy is the library name as np. Np is the short form or an alias for numpy. So anywhere in the code, you don't have to say numpy dot. You can simply say np dot. Similar to that, np, pd, and sns constitute the alias respectively for numpy, pandas, and seaborn. 
CBARN is one of the most popular visualization libraries. So for executing, you can use this run command here. And if everything going fine, then it will not give an error. So we have loaded these libraries into runtime environment of Python. What does it do? Any of the functionality implemented into these libraries will be available at runtime in the Python environment for you to work on the Python code and accomplish your tasks. One such task for us is to go about looking at getting a data set and trying to explore the data set. In doing so, my challenge would be to write very minimalistic lines of code and achieve maximum data analysis. To that extent, what we are going to do is to make use of the data set. Many a times what we typically do would be to get a data set either from the client or scout it from the public domain. You can go to Kaggle platform or simply do Google data set search and you will search for a certain data set of interest. So what I'm going to do particularly in this is to use the data sets that are baked into the libraries in Python environment. One such is the Seaborn library where a lot of the data sets are baked into Seaborn library. So for that, I want to use the command get See this? This is the idea of NB extensions. The moment I start typing few letters of a method or an attribute or a property, I'll get the help here. So get data set names is what I want. I'll just say enter. Because it's a method, I have to invoke it with a parenthesis. So once you do this, you will get, if everything going well, the list of data sets built into the Seaborn package. To read some of them are to name anagrams, ANSCOM, attention, etc., all the way up to Titanic. So a lot of the times I'm asked, where do we get the data sets from? So look for certain commands in Python, which gives you the data sets baked into the libraries. That's a good start. Of course, you can always download from the public domain. And by the way, those are called secondary data sets because we have not created, we're downloading from the sources that have hosted that already in the public domain. So we're going to make use of Titanic data set. For that, I'm going to make use of this SNS command and simply I want to load the data set. And within brackets, I'm going to give Titanic. Okay, so once it's done, if everything going well, it will store the data sets into the runtime environment. Let us just capture that in the form of an object called DF, short form for data frame. And I'm going to use the run command to execute. Yes, once you have loaded the data set, in some cases, if you have downloaded the data set from external sources, you would go to your predefined path. This is called a working directory, and you would be using certain commands for importing into the data set. Here, I've loaded from the predefined package as a baked in data set available to me. So I've loaded the data set. What you typically do in a real world setting to explore the data is to first use a head command to see the top five records, okay? So you could also use the tail command to see the bottom five records. And of course, by default, it will give you the five records at the top at the bottom if you use head or tail accordingly. And notice here, it will also give you the index of the row. These are the variables in the data set. And subsequently, this is a popular data set, by the way, Titanic. That's why I'm getting into, I'm not getting into rather detailing of it. So you would also see, for example, info function, which will give you a lot of information about a data set. This is a good snapshot. Anytime you run this command, you have to pause here and ask multiple questions. What are those? What is the information it gives you? It tells you there are 891 records or the rows in the Titanic data set. And these are the variables. Survived, passenger class, sex, age, sibling, spouse, parent, child, fair, embarked, etc. Okay. And the second column here, not null, tells you certain interesting information. Check for it. Total number of records in the data set is 891. You should see 891 against each of those columns, ideally speaking, if none of the columns have any missing values. So for example, survived as count of 891, meaning there are no missing values. Missing values are not there, it doesn't necessarily mean the values are appropriate or values are quality values, okay? You should always look judiciously and spend some time. Do the due diligence, that's the right word to say. Interesting would be to see age column, which has 714 for the count of values, out of 891, what does that tell you? That tells you there are significant number of missing values for the age column. Another variable that I want to draw your attention to is DEC, which is count of 203 out of 891. Majority of the columns in the variable called DEC in the Titanic dataset 
has unfortunately missing values. So other interesting piece of the puzzle is the last column, which is D type stands for data type. Survived is an integer, a 64 bit representation. So if you see int 64, float 64, etc., those are all the representation of the numerical variable. This is a whole integer. This is a decimal point representation. When you see object, when you see category, these are non-numeric variables, typically what you call categorical in the larger sense. Okay, there, there are subtle, subtle differences between category and object. I will not get into that discussion here. So you also see the additional data type called Boolean. So it gives you a count. We have two Boolean variables. We have two categorical variables. We have two decimal point representation of the variables. We have four discrete representations. We have five non-numeric or object. So this is the snapshot that you typically do. Not limiting to this, these are all the numerical side of things. You would also employ, like for example, I loaded Seaborn. You may look at matplotlib, pyplot, etc. For exploring it visually, the data set. And when you look at for exploration of this, you would look at a lot more than what I'm showing here. What are those possibly? You look at the scatter plot for the relationships. You look at univariate analysis. You look at bivariate analysis. You also look at multivariate analysis. You look at scatter plots, pair plots for relationships across the numeric variables. You use chi-square for categorical relationship among the variables. You use correlation matrices for looking at how strong or weak or otherwise the correlations are between the variables. And you also look at lot more to see any transformation, any unusual things going on in the data in the form of outliers, etc. We talked about missing values. So for each of those, if I'm a seasoned programmer, I can go about writing very elegant lines of code. But you get a sense of how much time I'm taking. Of course, I'm parallelly explaining, make no mistake about it, to write some lines of code for you to be able to accomplish a particular task. Like, for example, head is to see a sample or a subset of top five records. Tile is to see the bottom five records. Info is to see, for example, the snapshot of the data type and the nature of the data. And of course, describe is to see the numerical statistics. Pair plots is to see, for example, the visualization of the relationships, etc. So there are a lot more you can think of and go about doing it. Okay, it is cumbersome. Of course, it's a recurring theme. It is another matter. I explored the Titanic data set. At your convenience, go ahead and play around with all of these data sets. You don't look for downloading from anywhere. It is available and baked into the Seaborn library. So what I'm going to do now is to switch gears and then show you how do we actually go about maximizing the exploratory data analysis effort by minimal effort of coding. There are some standard libraries that comes to rescue. By now, by the title of this Python notebook, you would have recognized I'm going to use Pandas profiling. So before that, what I'm going to do, if in case, because there's a built-in data set, it is available in this session in memory. The moment I close it, we will lose the data. So you might want to write it into a data set, uh, sorry, a data file. So for that, you have to write using a data frame that is df dot to, let us say, underscore CSV. I'm going to save it as dot CSV file. Let us just call this as titanic dot CSV. So this is how you write a data that is in memory to a file that can be persisted into a working directory. So I'm going to say enter. So I've called this as titanic.csv. So you can uh, go ahead and see this. If I go to the working directory, you can see that it is stored in the path of the working directory, where I have the not uh, Python notebook, I also have the data file. So I recommend strongly anytime work in data science endeavors, create a working directory. You should have the Python notebook. If you're using Python as the environment of choice, you should have the data file. You should have all other artifacts related to, let us say, the project that you're dealing with. So titanic.csv is sitting here. So what you do typically if you have downloaded this titanic.csv from publicly available sources, let's say from Kaggle or other websites, so you would have imported it. How do we do it? So you would do it. Let us call this as df underscore titan. You would do it using pandas by reading it from that predefined path. What do you do? I start typing few letters, first few letters of the function that I think is the useful function for reading a file into Python environment then the help does the rest. So that is already maximizing the productivity. So read underscore CSV to read and import the data file from a predefined or the working directory. I've called it as titanic.csv. So I'm going to import this from that path. If everything going well, 
So it is stored in this object called df underscore title. So it's always a good idea to give meaningful information to meaningful naming convention or follow the meaningful names for variables. So just to make sure once you import, you can see the head to see the subset of the records. If it is read correctly, turns out you have everything taken care by default. So you don't have to worry about that. So now what we have done, let's just summarize. I have loaded a built-in data set by invoking the library in runtime environment. And I have persisted that into a predefined working folder. And from that working folder, I have imported the data set into Python environment and stored it to, into a data frame. If you can check this by using the command type and use this, you will see that this is a data frame. Once you do this, there now is the interesting piece, friends. Bear me out on this one and I hopefully add significant value to your hands-on learning. So from here onwards, we are going to go ahead and look at exploring Pandas profiling. So I'm going to put a comma and call it as Pandas profiling. The focus is always on, actually speaking, the exploratory data analysis. So Pandas profiling in itself is a package. So what do you do for looking at Pandas profiling is to go about actually invoking certain packages. Turns out pandas underscore profiling is the package name. You may wonder how do, you, how do I know? You don't need to memorize. Okay, let me emphatically say this as a practitioner. You don't need to memorize. You can look this up or by practice it will become muscle memory. First thing is to run the import command to invoke the package like for example how we have done here. If numpy is not installed it will give an error so that will give that will be a cue for you to pick up that there is no package available. So what you do in that case is use the pip install. You can say not pip. That means if not installed already, install the package. The one that is of interest and consequence is called pandas underscore profiling. Let's see this. Okay. So once you run this, if it's not installed, it will take care of installation. Let me just run it. Pip install pandas underscore profiling. I think it's uh, good. So you can see that requirement already satisfied. That means it has installed. So I need to import this now. So what will I do? I have to import a particular function of interest which gives me a report or the details for exploratory data analysis. Okay. So what I'll do, I'm going to say from pandas, see the moment I type few letters, it shall tell me from pandas underscore profiling, I shall import a function called profile report. Okay. So you can start typing. See, nothing happens. That's because that profile report is the starting letter is the capital P. So you can say profile report. Hopefully, I'm not seeing the pop up of the help here, but I, I guess I'm doing it right. But if I execute it, it will give me the clue okay, or the error. So from Prandas profiling, import profile report. It will take a bit of a time. Anytime you see the star, it is busy processing. So allow some time to do it. Yes, it's out of it. So that means without error, it has imported this function. Turns out this profile report is the function built into profile pandas underscore profiling package, which is going to generate a report of sorts for us to be able to do the exploratory data analysis. So what I'm going to do is to copy this profile report and invoke it as a function. So the moment you see here, it is giving me the help. It is called the context sensitive help. I know how to use it, so I don't bother. I'm going to pass my data frame object, which is nothing but, which is nothing but df underscore titan. Okay, so you pass this and it shall give you the output. So capture it under something. So let us say, I'm going to say df underscore profile for the time being. df underscore profile is equal to Profile report is the function and I'm going to pass my data object or the data frame. So it shall put this all the processed output into this object. Let's just see if I'm able to run this without any errors. Okay. So I think we, have go we are going right. So if you reference this object, it shall start showing you the report. The report meaning what I alluded to. All that information that I wanted you to see in this. See, let us allow it some time for it to be able to come up. You can notice here, summarize data set. Let us just bring this up. Summarize data set 100%, generate report structure 100%.
render html 100% voila how many lines we come back to the report and spend some time on the exploratory nature of the data and what to focus on i'll just talk in a bit look about this we wrote this line of code executable line from pandas underscore profiling import profile report one for importing the function second line of code is what the by far the doing the magic for us invoke the function passing the data frame object and capture the output in another object called df underscore profile referencing the df underscore profile as put out the report now friends this is the moment moment we are all been waiting for isn't it it shall give you a lot of the information see this it gives you the overview it shall give you the variables it shall give you the interactions and also talk about correlations missing values sample is simply some rows of the data or subset of the data okay what we saw here using head command before is the sample that it is talking about if i say head of 10 it shall give me those 10 records and sample would give me those 10 records probably right as a subset that's not a big deal what's a big deal is one line to invoke the library second line to actually accomplish the report which is lending naturally to exploratory data analysis is what is the minimalistic effort that i'm alluding to for maximizing the productivity and spending a lot more time on what matters in the real world and that is exploratory data analysis so let us just go back here and then say this this is the overall snapshot what it is telling you number of variables is 16 number of observations is 821 and there are total of 869 cells missing that means there are several variables that have got missing values if we can add up for across the variables all the missing values that comes out to be 869 and the percentage then there are no such duplicate rows and therefore the percentage of duplicate rows is nil and this size in memory and average record size this is of least consequence for now okay i'll just talk later in later videos probably when it is worthwhile to spend time the other part of the snapshot here or the overview here is as we have alluded to numeric five variables categorical eight variables boolean three variables how good it is to get a summary snapshot of things as a overview from a almost like an automated version of the code yeah then what you see here is the variables if i can scroll down and draw your attention you would see each and every variable it is something given as unnamed something to do with the data set because this is a built-in data set i've not tried to clean it so you can clean it probably those of you who are having ready access to titanic data set wouldn't, wouldn't see something like this unnamed probably you would see other variables so each and every variable it is giving information about let's see some important variables so this is survived so what i'm talking about is the snapshot of the output for what is called univariate analysis remember the in the in the world of uh, data science particularly the exploratory data analysis we spend significant time on the numerical side of data and the graphical nature of the data in terms of holistic understanding of exploratory data analysis and for doing that exploratory data analysis we'll spend significant time looking at single variable that is called univariate analysis we use other term called bivariate or multivariate for looking at two or more variables at a time for analysis so let's see this is univariate analysis of a single variable survived remember the survived is a categorical variables turns out it has two distinct values what are those two values are zero and one zero is not survived one is survived so it has two distinct values and the percentage representation doesn't seem to have any missing values and more importantly the survived is a dependent variable okay turns out of 891 people who traveled the titanic ship 549 unfortunately did not survive and 342 survived so it is skewed towards people who did not survive that's the overarching meaning okay so this information friends just a heads up is a very good information for you to see if the data is skewed one way or the other we are on a limited journey of understanding and exploring the data in the larger scheme of things from the machine learning perspective if this is skewed one way then it will have certain challenges to say the least okay so probably i'll not cover all of that i think occasion is not right and motivation is not that motivation is to maximize exploratory data analysis and do efficient exploratory data analysis by minimal code so you can also see 
passenger class has three distinct values one two and three and the distribution of those categories if you will and you can see the gender male and female so a lot of male travel the journey and you can continue to see age this is an interesting okay this far probably we saw categorical variables here and you can see here numeric variables so you can see here numeric variables there are a lot of descriptive measures thrown in like minimum maximum then if there are any negatives then of course you would have any missing values and what are the distinct values and the average etc of course you have to look for more than this in honestly speaking you have to look for mode you have to look for median and things of that nature but whatever it is giving you is a good ready reckoner for you to go about spending time on exploratory data analysis the visualization here tells you a story in itself okay so this is clearly telling you the distribution of the age age is a continuous variable so you would use a distribution of age you could use a density diagram for example okay density plots you can look at but this is a good enough histogram kind of a set so it tells you whether the distribution is normal skewed how it is skewed if it is normal or if it requires some transformation there are a lot of clues okay sibling spouse i can go a little quickly on these things then you can see parent child affair that is univariate analysis now hang in there the other aspect of it is the interactions so here we talk about bivariate or multivariate analysis these interactions are very very critical okay by far most of the time exploring the data to is understand these interactions so if i look at this age and what i see is a scatter plot of age and fair together as a bivariate scatter plot bivariate analysis so we have done a lot of numerical analysis above now we are looking at visual analytics to explore the data so you can see the distribution of age on the x-axis versus fair on the y-axis i'll show you something interesting if i click age and if i click age what do you get maybe it's worth pausing this video when you're watching and then think about it before you actually continue watching this video i think it makes sense to do that way from the learning standpoint so i'm going to click on age you know what you get a straight line why that's because it is a variable correlated with itself so that is to the extent of 100 percent and no point for guessing it right you would get a straight line so in fact if i can go ahead and show you sibling spouse with the sibling spouse you should expect to see a straight line if i go ahead and show you fair with the fair no wonder you would get a straight line last but not the least the parent child with parent child you shall see sorry okay that's that's something different sorry sorry we'll not talk about that so fair with fair so you can see this numerical variables basically okay now what i want you to spend time on is the class tab equivalent of it from the visualization perspective so i want to see age and fair how actually they are related you can see that i want to keep age as one variable and go ahead and see age and Sibling spouse, is there any relationship that is emanating out of this visual cue? Age and parent child, if you want to see that. Then you can go to sibling spouse and then repeat for across the variables. So it's a good bivariate and multivariate analysis setting from the standpoint of visual analytics. So visually examining the data, getting visual clues to analyze certain relationship across these variables or between these variables. Also tells you a lot about if there are any correlations in a different setting which could potentially lead to what problem called collinearity and multicollinearity. That's something a lot of people have confusion about. I shall make a video on that later. So continuing, I alluded already to correlations. This is the important table by far, correlation table. So what it is showing you is the graphical representation as a heat map, if you will, of the correlations across these variables. So remember, correlation values can vary from minus 1 to plus 1. Minus 1 is strongly negative to plus 1 is strongly positive. There is a color for a legend for interpretation. Darker the value and blue it is, it is strongly positive. Darker the value, sorry, darker the color and blue it is, it is strongly positive. Darker the orange color, it is strongly negative. So what you have to do while looking at this correlation plot is to ignore the diagonal elements. 
diagonal elements are more of equal, more equivalent of autocorrelations, variable correlating with itself. That means age correlating with itself is 100%. That is one. Sibling spouse correlated with sibling spouse is 100%. So you have to ignore the diagonal elements in a correlation matrix. What you have to see is the half diagonal elements. You can see the one half of the diagonal. Don't need to see the both because the upper half of the diagonal is exactly the mirror image of the lower half. So you can see something. I quickly go ahead and select something here, which is darker blue. That means it is very close to one being positive side on the correlation. Who is highly correlated with sex? So if you take another example here, passenger class is highly correlated with class. If I take another example here, sibling spouse is highly correlated with alone. Just to get a contrast, see something that is very, very faint. You know, even it's hard on this side of the story to see this but it could make better sense out of it very close to zero but slightly negative sibling spouse and this okay so you can see something here parent child with age slightly negative in, in fact it's moderately negative we can think of like that so it shall give you a lot of information and it is giving you a lot of information around let's say the missing values so i want you to quickly scroll up and catch up on something here the info output that we have okay i think i changed it let's just go ahead and do it one more time the info output so what did i tell you some time ago friends look at this age has got missing values because the number is not 891 in fact it is 714 and 203 is the missing values for the deck it's far less as compared to 891 so visually if you can see this for the output given by pandas profiling that's exactly what you are going to see and relate to what we talked about before. So let's just quickly go there. Where is it hiding? Here, here you go. This is 714. This is 203. So the length of the bars is a giveaway telling how many missing values are there. So this has maximum number of missing values. Next to highest would be this and the rest seem to have the bars that are uniform across and standing tall at 891 apiece meaning they don't seem to have missing values okay so you can go ahead and see this kind of a analysis this is the sample that i loaded to so it is giving me the 10 records if you notice here in python index starts with zero in many programming paradigms index would start with one so you need to be mindful zero means it's the first row one means it's the second row and therefore the last being nine for the index is the 10th row because index starts from zero okay these are the top 10 rows that it is giving as a sample isn't it how good it is to see with few lines of code and get to this level of detailing and spending a lot of time what are you trying to answer so friends not every time you need to do machine learning or predictive modeling a lot has to do particularly in the business intelligence setup or a setting you got to do reporting and therefore analyze as an afterthought what happened in the past tells a lot about what we, where we are currently and what is the action plan with respect to the future. So the what actions we have to take into the future and what kind of optimization is getting into the realm of prediction and prescription. But nevertheless, what we are doing is the exploratory data analysis. This enables you to answer a lot more questions for the business in terms of meeting the business imperatives. A lot of the insights can be used to move the needle, so to speak, make it progress towards the, your objective so it can help answer a lot and from the mechanics of modeling perspective this plays into the larger scheme of things so i could go ahead and use many of the artifacts here given by the pandas profiling as an output to go about looking at thinking about okay what are the variables that matter the most if i have to go about predictive modeling to predict who is going to survive or who is not likely to survive so i can go about creating and understanding towards the hypothesis creation hope that makes sense okay so of course we will do a lot more than what we are doing here and that's a good start uh, i think i think this is what i wanted to cover but you know what sometimes you want to store this report so how do you store this report is very easy peasy so what i are going to do is to go about looking at storing this report so what would we call this report let us so we call this as df underscore profile and you can put a dot and keep playing with it i think two five 
you can give some profile name you can give this as output file output file i think it is output underscore file if my memory serves me right and i can give the name mm, titanic profile report let's say i'm going to generate it as a html report so let us see if i've got the uh, correction if i got everything correct so i'm going to use the db underscore profile two file is the function that i'm going to use and i'm going to say output file is named like this titanic you can correct it if you want and if everything is fine it shall do the exporting and it shall export it to the path here so the moment i click here i can see it as offline so i can send it to somebody as an html version of it where you can open it in a browser for viewing this okay i think with this i conclude on this journey of the idea of using minimalistic code for maximizing and effectively analyzing the data set hope you have seen some merits in today's session i have gone about demonstrating this completely hands on way there are multiple packages that comes to rescue i think one of the ways of improving productivity is to go about looking at certain smart ways of implementation yeah so congratulations everybody if you have made this far in the journey and i sincerely hope that you found this video useful if so please give it a like subscribe if not already done so and please share it with your network and community for better outreach by the way i have also created a video in our environment where i demonstrated emphatically again the aspect of how we can improve the productivity by writing minimal lines of code with the focus emphatically on exploratory data analysis in the real world setting you have to work on some things that matter not endlessly write the code okay with that said i conclude my video here by thanking you one more time and i shall talk to you in my next video this is manjunath signing off bye bye and take care